everybody, Michael Snyder here, Seattle Weather Guy, Pacific Northwest Weather Chasers. Just doing a quick briefing on La Nina and El Nino in Pacific Northwest and what we generally can expect under La Nina conditions, which looks to be on the way for us here. Um, taking a look here, it looks like we're over 60% chance coming up here for the next winter. Second La Nina um, would be in a row. You can see there's a slight chance for us to be in neutral conditions and virtually no chance of us being in El Nino conditions. Checking out, you can see the ensemble and the ensemble mean here for potential for a moderate La Nina. We'll go over some of the conditions that can bring coming up here. We are under the La Nina watch. You probably heard about it online and on the news a little bit. So about a 66% chance, it's pretty good odds. Taking a look at what's going on during the La Nina, you can see the Nino 3.4 region out here. This is where these the index is measured temperature wise. You can see it extends off the coast of South America, the colder than normal water, and which in turn gives us warmer than normal water in the Western Pacific. Big walker circulation is going on here. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that. You can look that up on your own if you really wanna get in the weeds. You can see it brings a stronger pressure gradient off the coast of Asia, basically. So you get a strong gradient out here because of the warmer water and the colder Siberian continent. And it kind of give, ends up giving us a variable jet stream to the Pacific Northwest, gives us the Northwest flow and just kind of mixes our weather up a little bit more than versus an El Nino year, which is shown here. You can see the much warmer water off the coast of South America and extending all the way into the Central Pacific. Kind of gives us a stronger gradient over the Pacific and into North America there. And that keeps us a bit warmer and not necessarily wetter. It kind of seems like it might, but actually the systems by the time they get to us are, are somewhat weakened and not usually heavy rainmakers for the Pacific Northwest, much more so for California. But you can see the polar jet is weaker, less, less jet stream variability. And here we go. So here's the past 40 years and you can see El Nino noticeably warmer from the months of November through March. That's a typo on the screen here. That should be November to March. And La Nina, almost two degrees colder during any month during the, this season. So pretty noticeable temperature wise. Going on into precipitation, La Nina slightly wetter, about 26 inches, La Nino, El Nino 25 inches over this November through March period for these 40 years, 41 years. And what everybody wants to know about the snowfall, what's going to happen with the snowfall? As you can see in the La Nina seasons, November through March, the last 41 years, La Nina has dominated El Nino for snowfall. But there are exceptions. Everybody remembers 2019, the big snowstorm we had in February. That was an El Nino year. We also had a big snowfall in February last year. I'm sure most of you remember that one. And that was a La Nina year. So you can see La Nina years, the lowest one in the last 40 the La Nina seasons has given us about three inches of snow, the lowest. We've had, we've had six years of zero snowfall. They were all El Nino. So it just kind of shows you that if you do get a, a year with no snowfall, it's almost always an El Nino year. Um, the December 2008 La Nina, January 2012, that was a La Nina also. Probably, not a lot of you probably remember the February 1989 La Nina. So you can see the big contrast there between La Nina and El Nino conditions. Neutral is just a bit off of La Nina there, uh, which we do have a chance for also. Um, here is actually something else too. Here's wind speed. So the stronger you get into La Nina, the stronger the peak wind speed tends to be at SeaTac on average. You can see as you get into strong El Nino, you get weakest and strong La Nina, you get the strongest, you know, and, and with the big wind storms that doesn't necessarily correlate because the last two decent wind storms we've had at SeaTac were actually during El Nino year. So there's a lot of variability. And if you guys wanna know more about this, I suggest looking up YouTubing Walker circulation, Southern oscillation or the ENSO cycle if you want to really get into this stuff, but looks like we're on the second um, La Nina here in a row. And, it, you know, we can expect a little bit cooler temperatures and a better chance of snowfall overall. Um, 
If you guys like these videos, make sure to subscribe and click like, and I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers eventually so I can do some live feed storm chasing here in Pacific Northwest and live storm coverage. I think it'll be handy for the winter when I'm going over the big wind storms and we can talk about them and do updates every day or even a couple times a day for the bigger events. And yeah, so thanks for checking out my video and make sure to subscribe. Thanks everybody.